Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, oh, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. Hello, hey. everybody. <laughs> that was a double start. It's Joe List and Mark Norman here. Back in the apartment. We're here to suck your dick and uh, eat your mother out. And I think I feel like we're good to go now. I mean, we're going to have some scheduling issues. Maybe we'll Zoom. But until then, I mean, we're back. We're here. We're at the apartment. Lunch Stuff Studios, the sequel. Didn't we come up with a name for this place? Oh, yeah. It was Queef Town or Dick Cheese something. It was Lunch Stuff Deuce. Making a drop on a deuce. Maybe we didn't. I can't remember. I forgot to bring the thing. There's some guy mailed us some artwork, and I figured out how to hang it. Ah. Uh-huh. But I, I don't know how to carry it here. I'll have to wait till I bring the car. But some guy, I forget his name. I should have wrote it down. I'm a bad person. Shipped us two pieces of physical fan art. It says Tuesday, and it's like a brick wall with a little sign. You saw it. You came yeah. over the house, but we forgot to give it to you. It looks like a theater marquee that goes down. You know, it says T U E S, whatever it is. Yes, it's a marquee mark in the Funky Bunch. Yes, he was hot in his day. Marquee mark. I like it. That could be something someday. That's not bad. But I bought some gorilla uh, double double sided tape, and then you just stick it up there, and bang, ah. it hangs, and uh, it'll look nice back here. All right. I mean, does it? Does this wall's a little big for just a. Little dick hanging. Well, you might have to put it somewhere else or get some other artwork. You're a little light on artwork. Light here. on art. We bought one. Salakou sent me a print. I'm gonna frame that Nazi, and then we're getting one more over there. Okay. Well, so. it's, someone said we should get a big neon thing. It doesn't cost that much money. You I'm get down a for neon. Neon. It just says gay or bag Ooh, or whatever. Hey, yeah, we can go to a gay bar and steal one tonight. <laughs> um, but anyways, yeah, some kind of neon thing back here, maybe, or... What about this for a name for the new studio? The Glory Hole. I like that, but isn't that a podcast? Glory Hole podcast oh, or something? probably, probably. Who knows what the bisexuals remember. are doing these days. The Glory Hole is such a crazy risk. You don't know who's on the other end. You don't know if they got a herpy blister or a, or a, a, a one tooth they could cut you, like a can opener. Yeah, I don't see the appeal, but I guess the main appeal, it's mainly for gay people, right? Yeah. Like a dick. Because there's no, is there a lady glory hole or it's just a, a pussy? Because it would be hard to That's maneuver because the pussy doesn't stick out. You'd That's, have to have like a split. That's a big clit because the, the vag is negative space. You can't put negative through a negative. Right, yeah. Plus the wall would fuck you up because like a dick... A dick is what, like four inches on average erect? Sure, yeah. three on a good day. <laughs> so if it's four and then your drywall is a half an inch, right? you're only getting two and a half inches there. But if you're sucking, you can get, you only need an inch of suck. Yes. But if you're fucking, you need the full five inches. Yes, Don't that's you agree? true. Of course, of course. But a lady can put her clam up to the wall and you can plow it. I guess, but it'd have to be a thin wall, like a sheet, maybe. A sheet, like the Jews or the KKK. Yes, very is, different. Yeah, what is the Jew and the cake? Uh, the Jew and the sheet fucking? Is that a myth? That's um, I don't know. I just know about it from Curb, but yeah. I think it's a certain kind of Jew. Ashkash. I Nazi. thought she was Muslim. Ah, because wasn't she part of the Palestinian chicken? I thought it was right. a Muslim thing or a Palestinian oh, thing. Maybe or is it that is. the same thing? The Muslim and, and or Palestinian Jew very similar, and yet they hate each other. Well, it's all one land. I yeah. think they each claim the same land, which right. is very tricky, confusing. And they, I've met a couple pals who uh, who ain't fond of the Jews still, and they live in Brooklyn. Well, I think it's it's a whole just crazy mess over there. And yes. I'm reading this book called The Looming Tower, which mm. is, I don't care for the title. No, Jooming. It feels a little like, ooh, a right. tower. But this book proclaims uh, or says or supposes or presupposes. Mm. Do you know the difference of any of these words? I go suppose and move on. I don't do a pre or an anti or, a, or, or any of that. What the fuck's a presuppose? No, how about these people say supposedly? It's a D. 
Supposedly, yes. Supposedly. Supposedly. And how about when you see Fifth written out, when you go to that Fifth Avenue stop? Fifth. Oh, yeah. That's a, a lisper's nightmare. F-I-F-T-H. You'll get COVID from all that spitting. Fifth. Well, anyway, supposedly these the uh, the the Muslim fuck, and I'm going to get some some hell on wheels for this, but this is not my theory. But a lot of these Muslims, what happened was World War II, you know, they uh, the America won, and then they supported the Jews, and then Israel yes. became a state, uh-huh. and then these Muslims they believe that the reason America and God sided with the Jews because they weren't being proper Muslims. So they decided mm. to go, we got to go hardcore. Is that right? Muslim, because God's watching and we're being too open. We got our faces out here. We're fucking, we're not going to the mosque and the Mecca. Yeah, we're being nice to gays. Women are driving. So they said, we got to get hardcore. And so they like doubled down and became like hardcore. We got to kill these Jews in America because of World War II and God is watching or something like that. That's what I got out of the first. I only read the back cover, but. Sure. <laughs> seems like something. Sorry, a couple photos. Well, I read that, uh, or I didn't read. I heard this uh, on a on a fucking, you know, Snapple fact. But it said that the Palestinians owned all that land, and we said, "Hey, hey, 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 scoot over there, uh, hood rat. We're bringing in the Hebes, and they took half their shit. So they're pissed still because they're like, well, that's technically our dirt. But I think the the Jews were there before. They were all enslaved." Not before the Muslims, but they were there at the same time. I, th- I mean, I think this is going to be what cancels us, by the way, our ignorance I, on this. Well, I, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm learning. I'm learning. But the Jews were the slaves for the Egyptians, weren't they? Didn't they build the pyramids? Oh, they yeah, gave that's the, what I heard. Ben-Hur and, uh, you know, that was a scheme. chariots of fire. And But I think the Jews were, were slaves. I heard the same thing. But you, you picture a couple of Jews building a pyramid. I don't know. Who, whose idea was that? Well, there's different kinds of Jews. That's true. You got, I mean, there's some big sons of bitches. I mean, you got that's the, true. Uh, the, the bear Jew, Munich. Yeah, uh, Eli Roth, Gary Goldman. I mean, there's some uh, serious yeah. Jews. But Good then you point. got your Woody Allen's and your, you know, Gary Veters. Gary Veter, who's pretty shaped up, by the way. He's shifted <laughs> teams. Yeah, he's been lifting some dreidels. That kid. He's uh, he's ripped. He's no joke, and his kid is just goddamn adorable. And Too I think he's cute. starting a podcast. I don't want to. The maybe kid. Not. No, oh. he's got to wait a few years. Uh-huh. But anyways, we got all crazy. I don't know how we ended up in the Middle East here. Yeah, yeah, it's not fun. Uh, as Seinfeld say, it's all that sand and no beach will make a guy angry. But yeah, That's fun. Yeah, it's, it's his thing. But yeah, uh, we got to get out because I'm worried that we're going to piss off a couple of infidels or incels or whatever the hell it is. Yeah, I support the whole thing. Whatever you guys think, I think I'm for it. I don't know what's what about anything. And uh, I've met a Jew I like. I've met a Muzzy I like. I don't know. I go either way. By the way, the, the Catholics claim the same area. All the three big mm. religions, or the Christians, it's all one area. I've been to Jerusalem, and it's a mishmash of oh, real really? serious people. Yeah, they all are like, this is ours. All, all three. All comes down to real estate. Because Christ was born there, and then the Mecca uh, was born there, and then, you know, uh, Steven Spielberg was born there. So it's all one area. I didn't know he was there. I know there's a Wailing Wall, whatever that is. I went there. Is. Yeah, I went there, and uh, it was pretty exciting. You, you, you write a note, and you put a thing in there. And I feel like an asshole because, again, there's all three of these major things are all there bowing and crying. Mm. And I don't belong to any of these groups. No. So I just kind of stood there and watched everybody and took a couple of photos. Yeah, sure. Well, I don't know. That place is a dead sea. And uh, I'd like to go, though. I hear it's beautiful. The Dead Sea is the most overrated place I've ever been to in my life. You can all email me and tell me I'm a dick-sucking piece of shit, but it smells like farts. It's earth farts. It's all muddy. And I, I've told the story before, I'm sure. I went to the Waldorf story in Jerusalem. That's where I was staying. And I wore the slippers because they're like, you're going to want some sandals or whatever because mm. it's rocky and jarry and yeah. sharp. And so I wore the slippers, and as soon as I stepped in it, the mud, I went ankle deep, pulled my foot out, and the mud just ate the Waldorf Astoria. So I left two Waldorf Astoria slippers buried in, like, the most sacred place on the planet. Wow, look at that. It's almost as if the earth said, no, 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 you're not getting out of here alive. We're taking something from you. And I hated Very it. Very Jewy. I, it made my dick sting. It smelled like shit. And then the, our guide got naked. I saw his dick and balls and bush. It was really bizarre. Yeah, it doesn't sound like my cup. I mean, the name doesn't do it any favor. The Dead Sea, it sounds pretty shitty. No, it was bad. Yeah. Anyways, we got to steer clear of this because we have to delete all this, I think. You think? Oh, we're fans. We're just 
we're just trying to learn about it. I mean, look, we're taking an interest. No, we're going to get shot or killed or blown up or uh, canceled for this. Apparently, this is bad news. Apparently, the guy who drove into the Capitol recently was a uh, was a Middle Easterner. Oh. Which is kept under wraps for some reason. Yeah, I barely heard about that news story. I there didn't you go. get much of it. But sometimes I just skip news for a couple of days. I, I need a break. Ah, the Capitals having a hell of a year. Yeah, the Washington Capitals. TJ Oshie, the great team. Anyways, how about this? What do you know about shingles? The roof of the skin. The skin disease herpy thing. I hear it's it's manageable. Who'd you hear? What do you, what do you know? Hit me with everything you know because I think I got a case of the shingles oh, over really? here. Yeah, I'll oh, really? Oh, jeez. I've been jerking you off for a week. I've been eating too much bread to show you on camera, but... Um, what is it, the gut? I got, It's all over here. It's all on the side. And folks, write in, call in, email me if you're not too offended from the last conversation because I assume the people that know are, are Jewish, but I got this rash of red bumps all over Ooh. here it's all itchy and it's similar to herpes and you know i got a lot of that sure in my asshole so i just happen to have some uh um, valtrex in the cabin i had one piece of valtrex i put that in my ass and the rash started to get a little better it's like pink as opposed to red uh-huh. but it's itchy sarah's like i think that's shingles and i did some googling and shingles is usually on one side itchy starts with a rash uh-huh. it can lead to like nerve pain and all this crazy shit wow so I'm taking Valtrex every day, like three or four a day. I'm eating them. I'm putting them in my cookies and, and, and swallowing it. But Does it say what causes it? Is it a bacterial thing? Is it a, a, a laundry detergent thing? Is it's it a stress a, thing? It's a virus. So when, if you've you had chicken pox? Sure. Okay, so if you've had chicken pox, you have it in you. Because it's just the herpes, chicken pox, shingles, all one. They're like... Jews, Muslims, and Christians in Jerusalem. I see. It's all in there, and it all lays dormant in your spine or, or your nipples or somewhere. Hate dormant. And if you get stressed, Mark Dormant. If you get stressed out or whatever, if you have cancer or AIDS, you it, it pops out. And so I think I've been stressed. I'm all you know. I'm a stress ball. Isn't that weird though? You've been stressed your whole goddamn life, and now they pop. Well, other things were popping. Uh, they were waiting to pop because I had herpes pop. I had reflux pop. I yeah. had. You know, mom and pop. I got a lot of pops. Corn pop. Biden. <laughs> so all of a sudden, it's it's in there. You know, pop goes the weasel, and I'm all itchy, so I've been taking the thing, and um, I don't know. I think I got shingles. Wow. I can't wait to see it. When, I mean, show the folks at home. This I can't show. They'll deal. freeze frame. They'll do a whole thing. <laughs> I look like Santa Claus That's over a, here. I'm a fat fuck. It's a good point. It's a good point. They'll cut that up and say you're 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 got a c-section or you're gay or whatever it is so yeah good point you know i'm all doughy it's winter i mean by the way i gotta change it's 68 degrees you know i like my park parties i like to take my shirt off sun's out guns out fun's Hell yeah out. and so i gotta get into ship shape here so i'm doing the 19 hour fast i eat for three minutes a day and uh wow good for you well i made that up i'm not really doing that but ah. But yeah, I think I got the shing. I mean, I'm always, it's always something. It's reflux, always it's something. herpes, it's, it's like something. It's root canal, it's uh, forehead, something's cooking. It's bad news bears, but I don't, know, I don't know what to do, but I'm all pink and itchy over here. It's embarrassing. I've had every rash, gash, and slash in the book. I mean, so I'm, I'm with you, but I've never had the shing. I've had Pringles. They're delicious, but I've never had shingles. I've had scabies and uh, AIDS and scurvy. Never had the shing. Yeah, I got shingles and doubles. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's bad news bears, but I'm taking Valtrex like like you read about, and it, it's not easy to obtain this Valtrex. I had to go there, and I was like, hey, can I get a... And I feel like, um, what was that one on Seinfeld, or maybe it was Curb, when he's like trying to buy the... No, I know what it was. It was the, Jerry asking the, the dentist. Your dentist? Oh, yeah. Like, secretly asking for a dentist, because I, I had to go to the pharmacy, and I'm like, hey, uh, you Valtrex? Can I get a little Valtrex? <laughs> and the lady's like, what? And, and then there's like a bunch of old people waiting for their shot behind me, and I was like, Valtrex, can I get a refill? And she's like, I, I don't see anything here. And I was like, I got it here before. Dr. Steve called it in. She's like, it's been more than a year. It cancels. Ah, and I was like, I, I, I gave her like the doggy eyes or puppy eyes. What's the eyes? Puppy dog eye. Puppy dog eye. And I said... <laughs> Boy, I could really use some Valtrex if you if you know what I mean. Yeah. And she's like, and she gave me the sympathetic squint because yeah. you can't see the full face. It's all oh, mass. Oh right, she's a Muslim. So it felt like a sympathetic squint, and she just gave me that, and I was like, ah, oh, fuck. So then I had to have a doctor I know. I don't want to name names in case they get lose their license, but I had to have mm. him call it in, not Doctor Steve, different doctor. Oh, you know, two docs, couple doctors. 
And this one uh, called it in. So I went back there like a, an hour later and I was like, hey, remember me? And she gave me the thing, but it was a hundred bucks. Woo! America stinks. It seems like you get a bomb. Like, who told you to put the bomb on? I feel like a bomb would would kill that. Well, I had a bomb at the cellar last night, but it didn't help my rash. <laughs> That's what I heard. Speaking of Muslim, here comes a big giant cat. Oh my! It's just gonna sniff God. you. It's not even. It, it likes to be in the mix. It's almost like Todd Barry. It doesn't want to talk. It just wants to be near you. Oh, he talks to me. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's a bummer. Well, yeah, the cellar. I mean, look, I mean, should we get into the the first? Comedy club opening weekend. Cuomo touched me. The clubs are open with seats inside. Four rooms at the cellar. The stand got them. New York Comedy Club cooking. It's we're back. I mean, Woo! we're live Friday, April third, April second. A day that will live in for me, not in for me, but for me. For me. I mean, this was unbelievable, magical day. I was here. We recorded that day. We did a bonus and. What a what a night! I mean, it was magical. magical. We, I, I went over to uh, whatever. I came over here, walked into the cellar, and it just felt alive. Yes. First, the Fat Black, the lounge. They yes. got set up like a comedy festival over there. And uh, what what a night! Just seeing all these people, like Aaron, the manager there. Oh yeah, Steve Fabricant gave me a hug. I know he hugged me. I mean, I picked him up. His little feet were dangling, and the cellar's packed. Estee's over there. She looks amazing. Yeah, looks great. It was a special night, I gotta say. Special night. Celebrities came out. Yeah, there's Schumer doing a set. Romano's doing a set. Chris Rock's doing a set. Louis doing a set. It was hot to trot. You could run from one to the other. It was a, it was a nip in the air. McDougal was a buzz. It was the, the the old the strip was back. Gotham. Seinfeld's at Gotham, telling people to take the fucking plexiglass down. Killer night, killer weekend. And I heard that Seinfeld went before the host because he yes. wanted to be the first comic on. Pretty clever. I mean, it's a tough, tough spot because yeah, they're like, huh, ah, he got, he's got a chicken wing in his mouth going, ah, it's Jerry. What the fuck? Yeah, by the way, I heard he did pretty good. And then the host murdered. That's, That's what I heard. I heard the same. I heard yeah. the same. But she got to have an opening. That's a good point. Uh, she's got an opening, all right. But... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, I mean, women, not her specifically. It was right, a joke about right. vaginas. Huge, uh, Jesus, she's going to email clam. me. But anyways, it was so special. And the cellar upstairs was like packed. And I, by the way, I think like three people had the same thing as me. The comics table is an audience table right now. I know, it's odd. I walked right up to it and I was like, boy, there's a bunch of new people here. Uh, like literally, I, I almost sat down. I had my backpack and I was like, hey, oh. And then it's like a little couple seats over to the left. Yeah. So, the comics table right now, you can book a ticket and sit at the comics table and watch a show, which is right. pretty exciting. But those little seats were a nightmare because there's a little sliver and it just goes long ways of about four or five seats. And so then you get in, you get down there. Some guy goes, hey, he gets up. You slide in and then you're up. Oh, I'm up. And I, it's like an airplane. Everybody's got to get up and get out so you can get out. It's kind of a nightmare. So you, you got to go to the lounge. Yeah, the veil, the cellar is... The comedy cellar is still the best. Well, the VU maybe is the best. There's the Village Underground, which is a big room. That feels normal. That's where I did my first spot. I haven't been there yet. The Village Underground, and there's no plexiglass, and it's just open. And, I mean, it was hot. And the lineup was Jackie Fabulous. Oh, I love Jackie. Eric Newman hosting. Jackie Fabulous. Then Colin Quinn. Jeez. Then me, and then Louis C.K. Oh, That's your lineup. Oh, Lord. What a hot to trot spot. I mean, it was a murder fest, and then everybody's hanging out. Ron On's there. He's got no spots, but he hangs out anyways because he's cool. <laughs> and um, who else was there? J.P. McDade, Jalapeno Popper. He's there. Um, <laughs> tall cup of jizz, that P. Very tall. Strangely tall. Oddly. It's uncomfortable talking to yeah, him. Yeah, what are you, a scarecrow? He's like three heads higher than me. And he's like the kids in the trench coat that are on the shoulders. Oh, I thought you meant Eric Harris and Dylan Claybold. They were the kids that shot the school. Oh! <laughs> they were the trench oh, the, coat uh, mafia. Oh, the, what do you call them? The Conne Was that Connecticut? No. West Columbine. Bro Columbine. They were like the OGs. Yes. School shooters. Yes. I was a freshman in high school when that happened. Pretty exciting. Yeah, it was April of 99. So I was been a sophomore. That right? was big. Maybe I was a soft. I think I was a junior. Soft I think now. I'm a year ahead of you. Or maybe I'm wrong. I think you yeah. are a year ahead. Yeah. Not, what'd you, you graduated in 01? Yep. Yeah, 2000. Ah. I think it was April 99, which was the spring of my junior year. I thought it was 97. Maybe I'm gay. I Pretty don't know. sure it's 99, but I might be wrong too. But I read that book by uh, 
David Carter or June Carter or Joe Carter. Some Carter wrote a book called Columbine. It's the best book I've ever read in my whole life. The President? That was a Carter. That was Jimmy. Jimmy Peanut Guy. Yes. Yeah, but uh, that was crazy. And I remember teachers were a little, uh, were stepping lightly after that, you know? They were like, hey, you got a detention. And you went, oh, yeah, I got a trench coat in the closet. They go, take the weekend off. Yeah, it was crazy because I remember, oh, the cat's smelling me. It's just a sniff. All right. Nothing going to happen. Um, oh, the pants. I didn't get new pants oh, yet. Oh, the ankles. I'm blinded. A bunch of people email me. They're like, you got to go to longpants.com or silly pants or some <laughs> pant website. <laughs> silly pants. <laughs> we got to start that. <laughs> it was some kind of website with super pants or whatever. I haven't fixed them yet. Jesus. It's like Amish porn over here. It's bad news, man. I just want to kill myself. But by the way, someone sent me a suicide hotline. I was only kidding. I'm not going to kill myself over the pants. <laughs> I got a thing being like 188 suicide. It's never too late. You're you're loved wow. or whatever. Yeah, I feel bad. Well, I'm at least just they, kidding. At least they like you. How about, uh, how about a suicide text line, by the way? Nobody wants to call. A call will make me want to kill myself. No, absolutely. That's uh, it's no good. Yeah. I made a sketch a long time ago about the guy who wants to kill himself and his friends. His case is better than his friend's case against it. Mm, I thought it was that's funny. That's not bad. Yeah. It's dark, but it's not bad. Yeah. Now you couldn't even do it, I don't think. No. no you can't do anything now. Anyways, what were we saying? Oh, we were talking about Columbine, but you, we, we, we trailed off. We oh. uh, digressed. Colin Quinn was on the show. Yes. He killed. So good to see all these people. Back of the room. Everyone's watching. Everyone's laughing. And then, like, huge pops for everybody. It was so exciting. And then I just had a great set. Louie ripped it, of course. Then went over to the olive tree. And that one's a little bit tough sledding up there. Yeah, they got a plexiglass uh, in front of you and the audience. You know, it's hard to connect with them. It feels like an exhibit. You're in a museum for comedy. It's all very odd. They know it's odd. You know it's odd. 88 people commented on it before you, so you don't want to do it, but it has to be addressed, and uh, I just can't wait till we can tear that shit down. It's all optics, folks. It really is, because everyone's taking the risk being in there. Some rooms have it, some rooms don't, and it, it's, it just doesn't make really much sense. No. But hey, whatever we have to do to be back to normal-ish, but the thrill of being back was quickly thwarted, because last night I bumped into you. I was at the Fat Black, and it's mm. the worst show I've ever done in my life. Yeah. I mean, it was like one of the worst bombs I've ever had, ever. One of those confusing bombs where you're like, this stuff has worked a thousand times, so I don't know what to do. Like, I've given you good stuff that's tried and true, and if you don't like that, what, what are we doing here? Right. Yeah, I mean, I was doing jokes last night that were getting like zero, actually zero, bits that work. Like you yeah, said, yeah. like working bits. We're nothing. They weren't even aware that something had happened. Right. Isn't that fascinating how that can work? There's comedy, it's much like banging, where it's a lot about the vibe. You know, you bang one gal, and she's like, bah, 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 bah. and then you bang another gal, and she's like, <laughs> and you're like, what the hell? I'm doing my moves. Right. It's the, the same dick. The first girl sounded like a turkey. I mean, that was like oh, a dead-on turkey. Jive turkey. I mean, she had the, the turkey neck, and I... I, I I stuffed her. Yeah, it's so weird to think about moves nowadays because I've been sleeping with the same woman for 10 full years now. One decade. Wow, that's a lot of plowing. So I got no move. It says, here's your vibrator. You know, here's my dick. Sorry about the rash. And we all just get through it. We kind of go to our own spaces. Yeah. If I had to do it over again, if she died. Oh, wow. I mean, I can't imagine. I can't just be like, here's my ex-wife's vibrator. Do your thing. Yeah. I'd have to do something. Well, you, you figure it out. That's the beauty of being with somebody is you learn the, the twists and the turns and the flips and the flaps. The tricks of the trade, I guess. I'd have to knock down this rash, so hopefully she doesn't die in the next couple of days. Now, let me ask you this there, Fatty, because I don't know if this ring's true or Nuva ring's true or whatever. Cat's just stretching. Uh, do you feel like you've, because you've had sex with, uh, I don't know, 11 women in your day? 38. 38. <laughs> All right. I shot low. Not bad. That's that's with being with the same woman for 10 years. I had two other serious girlfriends for a couple of years. Didn't start till I was 19 with herpes and the teeth I have. That's pretty good numbers. That's pretty good with those ankles. That's solid numbers. But do you feel a difference from vagina? Sure, there's tits are different. The waist and the hips and the height and the hair and the breath and the asshole and the toes are different. But you... When you slide it into Jenny, does it feel different than Kelly? Never fucked a Jenny or a Kelly, but I fucked a Jimmy and a... a, a I couldn't think of a Kelly that's... What's something similar to Kelly? Well, Kenny? Ke I Kenny. Said Kenny. Kenny. Nah, also, fuck, Kelly goes either way sometimes. That's true. So do I. But... <laughs> 
Kelly Slater. I mean, some you do. I mean, well, here's the thing. I guess it's it's an interesting question because the pussy itself feels similar, but the surroundings of the pussy. I mean, you fuck a fat woman, it's gonna feel a little bit different because. And I did a lot of that. There's like sure. a, there's a huge Stomach. you know balloon there. <laughs> it's a it's a big puffy. Where like the pussy holes here, and then it just goes out right, and then up. Where right. some, it's just whoosh. some call that a fupa. Yes, exactly, or a gunt. <laughs> yes, that's the worst weapon ever, by the way. Uh, gunt control. I'm gonna start that that organization. But it is interesting because I feel like a vagi is pretty much, you know, it's cut and dry. Well, actually, you don't want it. Yeah, it's too sliced dry. and wet. Yes, thank you. Like a like a deli meat, but. It's pretty similar, but they they can tell Tom, Dick, and Harry a mile away. They're like, oh, I know that guy. Oh, that's tiny. I barely feel him. Oh, he's too big. Oh, that hurt my chest or whatever. I wonder how much difference, though. I even know. Because, like, they're, first of all, every woman I've ever fucked, her eyes were closed the entire time, which is a little hurtful. Well, she could be in heaven, you know. Oh. No, I think she's picturing, you know. Marty Barrett or something, but sure. she's got her eyes closed, but the dick, like how much, first of all, I think most dicks are similar sizes. Well, it, it ranges, I mean, we're talking micro, and then there's, you know, long dong silver or whatever. Of course, but the majority of dicks, I feel like are pretty, pretty close, yeah. within an, a half an inch, and it's like, how much are you really noticing? I don't know. I mean, we I I don't have know. a lady on here. Call, Call in, in if you're a whore. Um... Or just a lady. Uh, but I think, like, a huge... Like, the difference between me and LeBron James is going to be noticeable. Yes. But the difference between, you know, me and Dan Natterman, I imagine nobody's going to know the difference. None the wiser. I guess. I guess. There's girth, though. There's there's circumcised and uncircumcised. And, and there's, there's the, the, the bend. Flip. Yeah, the big bend. Uh, bend it like Beckham. So, yeah, I don't know. And some guys go... <whistles> some guys take a hard right, right. you know? Benjamin oh, Button. Yes. <laughs> um, I thought that movie was pretty good. I liked it. I was a PA on that movie. Oh, that's right. We talked about that. Talked about it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. Who knows? Because you, you hear some women, they're like, oh, I dated uh, Michael Jordan, and then I dated Woody Allen after that. And you're like, what? How could you deal with the different uh, piano leg and then, and then the matchstick? But, you know. But I think a lot of it's clit. It's all clit with these ladies. Clit? Clit. Clit. Short for clitoris or clitoris. Yeah, clitoris. Which one do you say? Clitoris? I say clitoris. I think it's clitoris, right? Oh, I don't know. Either way, it sounds like a dinosaur. But anyways, I think it's it's more clit than anything because I think a finger is, they love a finger. They love a finger. Exactly. So if, if a finger in a clit play gets you off, then a tiny dick's not so bad, I don't think. Yeah. Penetration is so weird because my ex was kind of like, I'm all clit. Like I barely have anything going inside. And right. I go, okay. But then you're with some girls that are like, put it in. And you're like, all right. And then... If you don't put it in, they're mad at you. Like they need that inside. I think some of that's mental. They like the uh -huh. mental thing of being plowed, you know. Because also women love it when you tease, when they you put just the tip. A tease. You put the head in, and they like that. It's a little funky business. So yes, tease is big. So I think it's not that important. So if you if you're out there and you're listening, you got a little noodle piece of shit rigatoni dick. Yes. Have no fear. Just get your fingers in there, a nice meaty finger, and play with the clit. Get a vibrator. And, and I think a lot of it's dirty talk yes. and being nice. I think the number one thing, I really think this, from what I've heard, is dressing nice. No, that's not it. I'm telling you, Artie Fuqua, have you ever seen him not with a smoking hot bra? Well, he's also he's, a eight foot nine, uh, rich millionaire Negro. Well, he's, I mean, is he hot? He looks like a velociraptor. He's like a whatever. He's average looking at best. Funny guy. He's 58 years old. Sure. He's funny. He's a party guy. I'm not I'm not crediting all with the clothes, but I'm telling you, I know women that aren't attracted to people that look like him that not, they're not, you know, racist. They're just like, that's not my cup of tea sexually. Sure. But this guy, he dresses. He's in a $1,000 suit tailored to him. I'm not saying dressing is nothing, but you're saying it's number uno. I don't think it's the uno, top of the list with a bull. I'm telling you, I think it's high because 
personality comes into play, but you see a lot of fucking assholes. That's true. They put on a nice jacket, the double-breasted suit. You put on a vest and uh, cl- well-fitting clothes. I mean, believe me, I, look at this. I, I got pants that are 100 years old. They're nine inches too short. I'm wearing the same sneakers. I haven't changed hoodies in six months. I don't, Nobody's barking at my tits. I mean, look, you, you got a bit of a cuck fin here, but it's not that. I don't think that has any. I think there's coolness. Hey, this guy doesn't give a fuck. And it's also kind of more hetero. You're screaming hetero here. But what are you saying? What you're saying is the clothes still matter. You're saying he doesn't uh, give a fuck because the clothes. Uh, they're seeing the clothes. I'm, clothes I'm, is bigger than face. I disagree. I'm telling you, uh, get you, some ladies in here. You know how many photos of Brad Pitt out there? He's got fatigues on. His jeans are ripped. His hair's disheveled. He's got a scruffy going. He's a, He's got a shirt that says, you know, baby gap or whatever it is. Two things. For every one of those photos, there's two photos of him in a tux at the Oscars in a designer suit on a thing, selling a shirt. He's always dressed nice, even unless he's dressed like that in a certain movie. And you're pulling the hottest guy of all, all time. All right, I'm pulling the we hottest gotta guy. we got to go into the medium. If we're doing an um, uh, experiment, sure. you don't pull the hot. Obviously, you know, who's the, the guy? Who's the exercise guy that was fat with the hair? Fat with the hair. Harvey Weinstein. Richard. Uh, okay, Harvey Weinstein. Oh, oh, better example. Richard Gere. Simmons. Richard Simmons. I mean, if you take Richard Simmons and put him in a Ted Baker, no one's blowing him. <laughs> no. And if you take Brad Pitt Maybe and you put him in a, in a tr- garbage bag, people are still going to fuck him. Yes, so there's yes. the extremes. You got to go in the middle. I'm telling you, if I, I put on a nice suit, which I do occasionally, this is how I know. I, I put on a suit for the late nights. And I get emails going, hey, what are, you, what are you doing after the show, you fucking hunk of cheese? Interesting. I'm telling you. Interesting. I'm telling you what. This is big because these fat guys get laid because they wear a vest. A vest? What? I mean, you know who else is wearing a vest? The guy bringing the plane in with the glow sticks. <laughs> a, v- a vest is out. The, the valet's wearing a vest. And the guy at the uh, the Wendy's. Not, a ve- not that kind of vest. I'm talking like a double-breasted uh, suit, a thing. Like a bulletproof. And look at fucking women are into cops and firemen because it's, it's the outfit. They want a stripper who's dressed as a cop. I'm telling you, they all, even the most Black Lives Matter fucking Molotov cocktail. Sure. What's the Antifa. group? Antifa. Antifa person. These ladies, they see a cop, they may hate him and want to throw paint in his face right? because he beat a guy, but they're like, hmm, it's a little bit sexy. I don't know. I'm, I'm telling I'm, you. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm saying clothes matter, but I don't think black clothes matter, but I don't think it's the full kitten kaboo. I don't think that's, it's not that's the, 13th on the list, if you ask me. No, it or, ain't 13. It's fifth. one or two. No. Clothes make the man. It's an old no. saying. Clothes make the man. I agree, but hey, tell that to a trans person. Look at Des Bishop. You see that guy, you Tall, go, holy good shit. good-looking guy who dresses well also. He is very handsome. I but think I'm, personality, I think vibe, your general vibe, your your personality, you know, just who you are, and, uh, what you've accomplished, your, how successful you are, how much you get done. But re- clothes reputation. represent how successful you are. It all comes back to the clothes. And mm. I'm not saying it's everything. I'm not saying it's everything, but how successful you are you look at a guy, look, he's got a hole in them jeans. Look at this motherfucker. You think you're asking me out dressed like that? You got to have the perfect fit, the jeans. Call in, ladies and Please in, call in. Germs. Call in Quinn. We only got 11 women listening to the show, but. Uh, yeah, well, 10 after this. Um, but, yeah. I don't know. I, I, I think clothes are something, but I don't know if it's it's Uno. That's what you, all I'm what saying. What would you say is Uno? I would go uh, personality slash type. He's this type. Mm. He's tall, dark, and handsome. He's a funny guy. He's an intelligent guy. He's an ambitious guy. He's a Wall Street guy. See, that's a, that's a, this is this is no good for this debate because you're naming four things. I know. I'm throwing things that's, out that's there, a, but I think a, all those matter more than clothes. Uh, okay. All right. All right. This is interesting. I'm looking forward to hearing. I wish your lady was still. Here. I know. I know. But she's she's gonna feel bad and go, oh, that thing, and point to me. Right. But. You know, you got a nice jacket every once in a while. You put on the new the leather LJ, thing. The you LJ. Got. Yeah. Maybe way, I haven't seen much of that since uh, uh, the debut. No, I couldn't. I wore it on Friday for the big opening, and uh, two people commented on it, and I burned it in the fire. Here's the last thing I'll say, because, you know, Forever? I dress like a douche, and you dress whatever, <laughs> and but 
when we do a late night, yes. what are half those comments? When you post the photo before the late night, half those, whoa, nice duds. Look at right, this. Right. Can't believe it. You clean up nice. Right. They notice. People notice, and they want to talk about it. They get a little turned on. And by the way, clothes are huge for me with the lady. Mm. You see your lady come out with the oh, dress, with yes, the slit, definitely. and the heels. You're like, it's with big. Women, with women, I think it's bigger. Men can get by with a T-shirt and jeans and look all right. I think a woman with the fashion and those wacky hats and the cloak and the, the slits and the tears and the cleave and the shoulder, I'm all 100% in. But here's the thing again. T-shirt and jeans, but they got to be right size T-shirt and jeans. That's true. Because you got a Tasmanian devil T-shirt down to the knees. People Wait are going, yikes, I wouldn't fuck him with a stolen dick. I got the perfect example to, to back me up. I know who you're thinking. Soder. That's who I was thinking. He's a hunk of a man. He's got a deep voice. He's tall. He's funny. He's talented. He's on eight HBO shows. He's cooking a movie up. He's doing weed, whatever it is. He dresses like an eight-year-old retarded skateboarder. Right, and they all comment on that because he's so talented. Talented and funny, it trumps the clothes, but he's got there all you those. Go. But he's got all those packages combined. If he was fat and ugly and retarded, <laughs> I'm saying a fat, ugly idiot <laughs> with a suit on is doing as well as this guy that has I, all these talents but bad clothes. I disagree. The fat, ugly idiot is is in a three piece suit, and it's obvious. Like this guy is such a loser. He's got to do the suit to compensate. He stinks. Let me think of someone. Patrick Stewart. We just talked about him. He won Sexiest Man Alive. The gay guy with he's the bald all in suit. Was that the Patreon or was that the regular app? I can't remember. I don't know. But he, he's on a TV show. He's wearing funny. he's wearing a, a uniform. He's the captain of the Enterprise. That's Ex a whole, that's a bad example. Exactly. He's got the uniform. <laughs> the uniform is big. <laughs> if I walk around with the fucking captain of the Enterprise suit on, I'm getting tackled at Comic Con. Clothes uh, are big. Clothes are big. And soda. So uh, first of all, Soder's attractiveness blows my mind. He's got a crooked haircut. His head's too big for his body. His voice, he sounds retarded. His act is wonderful. He makes some money. I think you're all off on the ladies. He's uh, he's masculine. He's tall. He's kind of uh, wide-shouldered. He's uh, charming. He's on. He's funny. He's quippy. That's all it is. It's a vibe. He's got a vibe. Even if he was ugly in the face, they'd go, something about him. Women, I say, something about him. Even when women have dreams, they go, the guy had no face. He fucked me in the ass. It was great. I didn't even know what he looked like. Maybe confidence is the biggest. Confidence. Confidence might be the biggest. That might be it. All right, we can agree on that. Confidence might be number one, but clothes is number two. I don't know I'm about I'm telling two. you, clothes is big. All right, well, we've done a, a, a half an hour on, on threads here. All right, all right. Well, I just thought we made a good point. I thought it was pretty compelling. It was compelling. <clears throat> a lot of tweets are going to be about this clothes. I'll tell you that right Ladies, now. Ladies, tweet in, email, send us some clothes, whatever you want. <laughs> you know what, you know what's nice about this is this has been so wide-reaching and um, what's that thing? Debated. Uh, what's the word? Debated. Contentious. That Whoa. it'll drown out all the controversy of the, the Muslim Palestinian uh -huh, thing. No yes. one will even mention it. By the way, Muslims, horrible dressers. No, I don't know. Some of those guys. I, I think guess the they, ladies. They do okay. The ladies have to wear the garb or whatever. Yeah, the, the sari. What's that? I think it's a sari. That's a board game. Ah, uh, I thought it was called a sorry. I don't know. Aziz give, give and sorry? The, give that a goog. I don't know. Check it out. Not sure either. Oh, my God. Put we your sorry's in a sack. Things. Oh, jeez. Sorry. We got ads. Sorry. Yeah. I hope they're clothes. I know. That'd be <clears> nice. <throat> All right, folks. Oh, what, what's the point of wearing clothes if you don't have good deodorant? Yes. Here, here. Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by Native Deodorant. I love ne Native Deodorant. Excuse me. They just sent us a uh, another box of deodorant, and this stuff is so good. I'm wearing it right now, of course, Ooh. as always. I wear it every morning. So does my wife. Native deodorant is formulated with no aluminum, Ooh. parabens, or talc. It's vegan and Ain't never talc. tested on animals. They have ingredients you know. Native deodorant is made with ingredients you've heard of, like coconut oil and shea butter. Even if you switch from an antiperspirant, don't worry about B.O., they have over 16,000 five-star reviews. That's insane. Yeah, that's a lot of reviews. Nobody leaves reviews unless they really love something or really hate something. So if True. there's 16,000 five-stars, you know it works. Yes. They got amazing scents. Over 10 scents. That's fun. Including their classic and rotating seasonals, you're guaranteed to find one you love. Check it out. 
Plastic free option. I mean, this stuff is as good as it gets. Mark, you know about it. Tell uh, them how you like it. Tell them where to get it. I love the native. I use it. The lady uses it. It's versatile. We go with the old lavender, baby. That's my favorite. Lavender and rose. You can also get coconut and vanilla. That's the most popular. And uh, cucumber and mint, citrus and herbal musk, whatever you like. Get on it, folks. There's also a plastic free option if you want, want to cut down on your plastic consumption. Hell yeah, we use too much. Native now offers a plastic-free deodorant in the most popular scent. There's something for everybody. Make the switch to Native today by going to nativedeo.com slash stories. Oh. That's, that's N-A-T-I-V-E-D-E-O dot com slash stories at checkout and get 20% off your first order. NativeDo.com slash stories or use promo code STORIES at checkout for 20% off your first order. Get on it, folks. Yeah, do it today. Tuesdays with Stories is also brought to you by Raycon. We love Raycon. These are some of the best earbuds around, and all we're doing these days is just watching. I know we're back and COVID's ending and the whole thing, but you're still watching shit. You've gotten addicted to your new programs. You probably got Paramount TV and Peacock TV and Netflix TV, whatever the TV is. Yes, TV. Plus the music and the podcast. You're listening to a podcast right this moment. So you're going to want the best thing for your ears. You're always looking at a screen. You're always listening to podcasts. Now you need Raycon wireless earbuds. No dangling wires or stems to get in your way here. Raycons come in a range of stylish colorways, but always with a comfortable in-ear fit for a more discreet look. Yes. Yeah, baby. Raycons are built to perform anywhere and anytime with water and sweat-resistant construction and Bluetooth that pairs quickly and seamlessly. Mike, nice. you love these things, don't you? Love the Raycon. I put one in my ear just to go to bed. They're, they're sleek. They're fun. The sound quality is great. Raycon. That's how they start up in your ear. And they just sound good. They feel good. They come with different ear sizes. You can really fit it right in your hole. Raycon's offering 15% off all their products for our listeners. And here's what you got to do to get it. Go to buyraycon.com slash Tuesdays. That's it. You'll get 15% off your first Raycon order at B-U-Y-R-A-Y-C-O-N dot com slash Tuesdays. One more time. Buyraycon dot com slash Tuesdays. Giddy up. Well, should we should we come back to the third one? Yeah, we'll save it. We'll, we'll save, save it. that because that one uh, I love. I talk about it all the time. I hate it. So what what else is going on? Please well, take over because my throat hurts. I got oh, cum all over the place. Well, all that clothes talking. We got pretty uh, hot and bothered. But uh, the clothes talker. Yes. So I just gotta say, I, I had a fun, I had a fun save with a with a gig. Hmm. You know me, I'm a disorganized. I actually got a lot of emails from assistants after we talked about that. Nice. I must have gotten 30 emails like, let me do it. I'll do it for free. I'm gay. I'll blow you. Whatever you want. I, I'm, I've been doing you know, Zuckerberg's numbers since 88. I can do you too. One so, guy, Alec Baldwin's assistant hit me up. What? No joke. She's like, I'm quitting Alec. He's a psycho. And uh, he yells at me. So if you need a guy, and I'm like, I can never afford you. Wow. Yeah. Are, you, are you thinking about it? Are you dabbling? What's going on here? I'm dabbling. I'm dabbling. Uh, maybe I'll try, but I almost feel like it's a lot of work having the assistant in a weird way because I got to go, here's all my shit. Here's all my passwords. Here's what I need. Here's what. So all that time I'm explaining, I could have just booked the flight. I think that's it for the beginning. But yeah. then it's good. I guess so. It takes so. a while to train. It's like having a dog or a girlfriend. Once you get them trained, it's then it's easy sailing. Right, right, yeah. Well, my manager quit, and then somebody re somebody suggested, hey, why don't you go without a manager for 10 minutes, get an assistant. They they do all the, the management shit anyway. Why not pay this guy yay-ho and, and stop paying them 10% of your whole kit and caboo and see what happens? Exactly. I, I got to say, I feel for these managers because I know. it does feel like a lot of their job is becoming a little less needed. Yes, yes. With the uh, Patreon and the things. Obsolete. Yes. And we know a couple guys who have had some dicey guests and said even way crazier shit than us, and you're like... You're all in on this this internet thing, this podcast thing, this Patreon thing, this self-produced pirate ship thing. 
And uh, I don't know how I feel about it. Where, what do you think? Well, this might be more of a Patreon, All for right. God's All sakes. Right. I mean, this Sorry. could get spicy and dicey and You're licey. Right. Yeah, get on the Patreon, folks. But, um, yeah, that seems to be the direction things are going because, you know, I mean, what are we going to do? Get a job working for Disney? They'll, they'll snip us oh. out and throw us out in about 10 minutes. Oh, yeah. There's a couple guys out there who would just nip that in the anal real toot sweet. But either way, uh, um, I'll get back to all these assistants. It's a lot of emails. It's a lot to, to mull over. You need an assistant to look at the assistant emails. Exactly. I'm screwed here. So basically, I'm figuring it all out. But I got an email from the University of Pittsburgh. Hmm. Nice little letterhead, and I got head, and the whole thing. The and Panthers. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Ah, Black Panthers. So I go, they go, hey, we want to have you on a Zoom thing. It's a, it's a pretty penny. And I go, great. So they go, also, uh, do you know an opener? And I said, how about Gary Veter? And they said, all right, let me watch his stuff. I never heard of him. And I said, no one has. And then they checked it out. They're like, he's perfect. So he'll do 50 minutes. He gets a nice paycheck. I get a hot paycheck because I'm the headliner. 45 minutes of Zoom ain't a picnic. No, I've done it, and uh, it is an unpleasant situation. <laughs> it's it's not lunch. You're bombing in your own home like an idiot. You, you blow through 45 in about eight minutes. Yeah. Everybody's checking their phone. Nobody likes you. They're muted. One guy's going, he's like too close to the camera, you know? Yeah, it's bad. It's bad. So, But it, the money's good, so I say, let's do it, Chachi. I'm in. Then... I get an email from another guy, and he goes, looking forward to having you on Thursday. It's sold out. And I go, oh, sold out. That's good. But what the hell? Thir <laughs> University of Pittsburgh is Thursday. So I go, well, it's a Zoom. It's probably like five. You know, you can put a Zoom anytime. And he go, I call the guy, and I go, hey, hey, what time is this uh, Pittsburgh Zoom? He goes, it's at 9 o'clock. Hang up on him. Hey, Dickless, what time is uh, this sold out show? 9 o'clock. Ah, oh, come boy. on. Oh, boy. So I go, how am I going to pull this off? So I go, hey, Pittsburghy, how about we move that show to five? You know, who, who cares? It's Zoom. And he goes, it's already all over the bulletin boards. The kids are having a pep rally. Uh, school's in session. We had a shooting. We need you at nine. I was like, ah. So I call the other guy. I go, hey, Dickless, <laughs> sloppy jalopy. How about we move this puppy to, to 11? He goes, tickets are sold. We can't move it now. It's a week away. I hate you. You suck. You're a hack. And I go, ah. God. So I go, Why how? Why do you do this to yourself? I don't know. I need to see Every week with this. Every week I want to kill myself and cut my dick off and feed it to the cat. I wish you could see it. It's like the cat knows to stay out of frame. It's, it's like, terrifying. First of all, sleeping. it rolled over at some point. It was facing this way and it touched my shoe. I'm, I'm still shaking and now it flipped over. I know. We're yelling racial slur at full volume and he's like... <laughs> it's like a lullaby. Oh, he woke up. Oh, boy. All right. So... I go, how am I going to get out of this one? What, what's the, how's, how's, how am I going to pull this one off there, Sloppy? So I call back the, because the money's so good with Pitsy, I got to cancel sold out. I mean, that's just the breaks. Yeah, sorry, sold out. Yeah. And so he goes, how about this? And I go, yeah. And he goes, what if you got to do this Zoom? What if we do my show, film it, live stream it to Pittsburgh at exactly the right time? They get a real show instead of just me on a laptop like an idiot, and they get a hot show here in audience members. Like they get a ticket to a hot show that's sold out via Zoom. Wait, your show? The other show's in person. Yes, I see. So you're going to perform live. They're going to film Island. it and then shove it up. They're going to stream it ass? right to Pitsy. The what? Panthers. Pittsburgh's not going to go for this. That's what I said. So I call up Pittsburgh. I'm shaking. I go, hey, buddy, I got one last idea. And he goes, uh, he already hates me because I'm, I'm calling him nine times. There's sure. a baby in the background. He's hitting his wife. So he goes, uh, yeah, yeah, what, what do you got? I go, ah, this other guy's an idiot. He's got some crazy scam where he wants to live stream it right to the Pittsburgh Auditorium. And he goes, that's pretty good. And I go, are you kidding? He's like, yeah, I love that. How, how are we going to do it? And I say, well, why don't you call him? Because I don't want to deal with this shit anymore. So he calls him, and they work it all out. What? So it worked? I mean, they filmed it and had it on the Zoom? It's next week. Or it's oh coming up. God. It's this Thursday. Is this going to work, though? Because the college, you got to be clean as a queef. you got to really go, hey. Oh. And, and, I mean, this show, it's going to be live, and you're going to have to clean it up. The people in person are going to be like, what the hell is this? We don't want a college, Norman. Oh, we want raw, crazy Norman. Right, right. <laughs> raw, crazy Norman. RCN. Yeah, all right. Well, I didn't think about that, but the guy's going to get hes gonna get the 20 minutes of Jew, Puerto Rican, and anal material. I'm sorry, Pitsy, but this is it. That's the breaks. So 
Are you doing the same amount of time on both shows? Well, here's the clinker. I was supposed to do 30 in Long Island, the sold-out show. Uh -huh. And this guy's paying me to do 45. So I said, hey, can I do an extra 15 free of charge? He goes, yeah, I'm getting more time from you. So great. Wow. Boy, this is really interesting. I mean, you got to keep us... Uh, updated Abreast. here because this would really be some kind of thing to pull this off. I know. This is like Live Aid. Yes. You're Freddie Mercury. I got AIDS. Yes. So here's the other rub, though. They go, the, the Pittsburgh guy goes, well, how are we going to, are we going to zoom Veter? Because we want an opener. Are we going to zoom Veter and then click over to the live? And I go, sure, because I don't know anything. Go, how yeah. does this work? I mean, is well, all this, are you guys able to do this? The, apparently the guy in Long Island, some kind of tech nerd asian queef he knows all about the wires and the hookups and the digital this is mind-blowing i you know pull this off, i mean you're zach morris i'm zach morris i got eight phones going I've, I've got one arm on my shoulder i got this i'm emailing people it all all locked in so then this is the only everything's locked in this is the only problem they can't do the zoom with Vitor and then click over to me so i go ah well we don't need Vitor. i'll just give him the money or whatever and he goes could you get Veter to Long Island? And I go, hmm. I call up Veter. He's the sweetest, easiest, most non-confrontational, low-maintenance guy on the planet. And I go, I tell him the whole story. And he goes, yeah, I'll do it. It was like the deaf chick. Okay, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. I'll do it. Yeah, so he's like, yeah, whatever. I'll drive. So now I got Veter <laughs> driving. We're going to go out there. I'll get drunk and we'll steal some food. We'll do this fucking live aid, and then we'll drive back. Wow, if you guys pull this off, I mean, that would be unbelievable. By the way, I gotta say, if I was both these guys, I'd be so frustrated with I this know. whole situation. They're all excited. This is like a caper. Uh, unbelievable. I mean, I'm, it's exciting, and uh, God bless Veter. I just love that oh, son of a bitch. And yeah. speaking of the deaf woman, that's another thing that's on the Patreon. We did a new uh, Seinfeld. Seinfeld watch along with yes. this guy, uh, Chuck D, Chuck Stanton, Chuck Knobloch. Yes. He shot a three camera shoot of us watching Seinfeld and he's slicing it all together. It's so that's going to be something. So the guy's a pro. He's a whiz with this stuff. We're trying to kick up the quality a little bit. So check it out, folks. Get on the Patreon. And by the way, this episode is also brought to you by Manscaped. You got to keep yourself looking nice. We talked about it earlier. You got to look nice in your clothing and you want to shave up yes. your pubes and your bushes. Yes. So get yourself some Manscaped. Our partners at Manscaped specialize in products just for your dick and balls. Get yourself trimmed up with Manscaped precision tools for your family jewels. It starts with the Lawnmower 3.0 trimmer. Thanks to their ceramic blade and advanced skin safe technology, you won't nick or snag your sack. Plus, mm. it's waterproof so you can trim in the shower. Keep it clean, folks. Keeping your pubes at bay is easy and I'll make you feel good. With this tool, it only takes five minutes. What do you have to lose? I fucked up a little bit, but I won't fuck up when I shave my balls tonight with the lawnmower 3.0 Manscaped. I know you use this stuff. You got a nice clean bushel. Hell of a bushel, hell of a twig, hell of a berries, and uh, talk about size all day long. This gives you another inch because you're just down to the to the grassy lawn there. No more bushes and no more brush. So uh, get on. I keep I keep that lawnmower 3.0. It's new and improved. I keep that puppy in my bag when I go on the road, just in case I got to trim up here, trim there. My asshole's you know covered in covered in hair. Looks like I'm sitting on uh, Bob Ross down there. So get that puppy ASAP. And you get the ball wipes. You get the smells and all that stuff. The lady even uses the ball wipes. She's got huge balls. Twenty percent off with free shipping. By going to manscaped.com slash Tuesdays. That's 20% off with free shipping by going to manscaped.com slash Tuesdays. Manscaped with a D at the end. Tell them you know us. They'll help you out. Yeah, tell them uh, <clears throat> we sent you. Yes. I never knew what that meant when they would always say that on the radio. Tell them uh, the big show sent you. Or whatever. Oh uh, yeah. I was I like, know. am I supposed to say that when I what? There was more of that. I think back. That was like a cool ego, like a macho thing. Tell him, uh, Big Joe sent you. There was no codes back then because there was no internet. So uh -huh. I think they just wanted to be like, say my name, and so then they'll they'll know it's working or whatever. Say my name, is... Remember Groupon? That was a that had a moment. 
I never used it. Yeah, I never. I I've never used anything like that. I've never used Groupon or uh, Coupon. The other thing. What's there's another thing like that. I think Kayak. it still happens. Yeah, none of that stuff. I'm such a fucking idiot. Yeah, it's all out there. But here's the here's the thing, though. I feel like you're you're using that stuff. You're spending all this time filling it out and signing in, logging in to Groupon and printing shit out. Yeah, we would have been all all done by now. The, you're wasting time, which is money, and then you're saving eleven cents. In the long run, but you spent like eight hours on it. Yeah, I never get it. I don't care, and uh, I'd rather just just pay it. I don't give a shit. Right, right. Fuck it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, uh, travel miles, great. Credit card points, great. But Groupon, I don't know, feels a little... My mom was the the, the skank at the uh, grocery store going, hang on, I got a coupon for those oh, cucumbers. My mom and was, like, oh, God. She was always... She looked like Edward Scissorhands. Yes. Every Saturday morning cutting. Yes. And she had a little red thing, and it was like organized, like cereal, whatever the fuck, socks, and she had a whole book full. Yeah. But looking back, it was sweet. It's like blue collar. I got to save. It all sure. adds up and that kind sure. of bullshit. But yeah. I mean, my mom, we would go every Saturday. We would circle with a big red marker. We'd pull out the newspaper, circle the garage sales near us. Mm. And then we would drive to one that was very wholesome and good bonding with the mom. Yeah. Because you get to go, hey, look at this uh, old dildo. It's uh, eight eight cents. And she's like, well, why not? Try it. Yeah, it's my mom cents. loves bondage. But yes. Do you remember? Uh, I think I talked about this before, but... Uh, Rosie O'Donnell in the leather suit in that movie. Another stakeout. Yes, we talked about it. Not a fan. I jerked off to that. Oof. Today. Boy, scraping the barrel with old Rosie, huh? That was a tough look. I mean, she's not a real peach. I mean, she played for the Georgia Peaches in League of Their Own, but ah, I pull. liked her. She, they had a the top of the tit was exposed. Yeah, that's and something. I liked. I'm not a big fan of thick unless it's like this powery, yeah, you know, manly. Uh, heels and leather yeah, kind of yeah. like to beat you up. I get it. I got you. You want a little domination. Sure. Why not? Yeah. Make me eat my own cum on a Wednesday, you know? When I was a kid, I liked, the, they always had the uh, St. Pauli gal, like beer wench whore, you know, who's like had the mugs and the, the, the what do you call it? The pig, ponytails. Pony, pigtails. Pigtails. The pigtails. mugs and the jugs. But there was always like a... A propping. Hey, that's a good name for a bar. Mugs and jugs. Ah. And it's like big dead women bring you the thing. Right. It's like a like a Twin Peaks. Yes. Or Hooters. Or Hooters, which feels to be fizzling out. Hooters stinks. I never liked it. I always describe there's one guy in comedy I always describe as he's the kind of guy that thinks Hooters is cool. <laughs> Like he's like he picks you up and he's like, We're going to Hooters. Yeah. yeah. And you're like, All right, I guess. Right, right. I, I walked stinks. I walked by one in, uh, I don't know where I was, Houston, Dallas, and it just feels weird. It's like dingy, and the windows are blacked out, and, and then the gals, I have to say, of uh, the quality ain't as high. No, I think if you want to make real money, you just go strip, go strip. or you post photos on Instagram. Ah. I think Instagram might be fucking Hooters. The OnlyFans. Exactly. Yeah, good point. Remember we were on OnlyFans for a minute. That oh, was pretty yeah. fun. We got to get back. We got we got paid handsomely. Yeah, I think so. Well, it was, eh, you know. For us, cutely. it wasn't bad. Yeah, but uh, hey, speaking of uh, money and OnlyFans, get on the Patreon, folks. We're making changes over there. As we mentioned, three camera shoots. We got something. We shot in the street. We went to Chipotle, and we shot that. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's boy, all uh, coming out. Chuck Knobloch, and we watched a Seinfeld with three cameras. So I think I already mentioned this. I'm an idiot. But make sure you get on there. The cat keeps rolling over. It's Well, it's getting comfy. It's interesting. I've never seen it this relaxed and comfortable. I think you got a thing cooking with the cat. Maybe. You got a good aura. Uh, or maybe it's the clothes. Aha. Uh -huh. They make the man. Um, so I did a gig Saturday with uh, Greg Stone, old Coraluzo. One nighter, Bridgeport, Connecticut. I love these gigs. Saturday, 67 minutes away. Yes. With traffic. Yes. One show. Woo. 45 minutes back. Woo. I pick him up in the Centra. It's so exciting. He's driven me to so many gigs, so it felt nice to pick him up. Yes. And it was like the old days, you know? We're in the car. He's got the coffee. I swoop him up, and we're just bullshitting about God and life and death and gays, whatever, having sure. a nice time. We drive up there, and it's a beautiful theater, 1,000-seat theater, max 300 seats. Okay. Got to, they got to do every other row, spread it out six feet, that kind of thing. Is this an agent gig, or did you find this puppy? My agent. Okay, even better. Stop agent hate. I mean, they came to me and my agent, whatever. So we go to do the gig. A couple days before, they're like, tickets are a little light. You know, it's COVID yeah. and your career sucks. So sure. 
We're thinking about moving you to the smaller room. But this, in this case, the smaller room seats 80, maxes out at 40. So I'm like, ah. great, I'll do 40 in a, a room that seats 80 as opposed to 50 in a room that seats 1,000. For it's God's sakes, let's like do the, it. Like that Long Beach gig we did. It had 300, then we popped it down to 60, and the 60 was better. You in Long Beach, motherfucker. <laughs> um, so Shit, I'm, like, I'm all excited. We got an email the next day. Ah, I promoted it again. They're like, ah, you oversold. Too many for the small room. Okay. We got to okay. go to the big room. So it feels like a win. Yeah. But now you got 78 tickets sold in a right. thousand seat theater. Right. And they're sitting every other row at yeah. six feet apart. So it's just like a sprinkle. It looks like, you know, you put a little salt on your uh, asshole. Sure. That doesn't pucker. So we get there and it's Greg and I, and I've done a few gigs. I did side splitters, whatever, the whole thing. And I'm like, so, yeah, this is the gig. It's the school. <laughs> we started to do this. We wanted to do that. That's how we came to be here. You get the story of the gig. And I go, so what are we looking for for time? Nice, easy. And he's like, more the merrier. We want it 90 minutes or longer. Oh, no. And there's two of us. Oh, no. And if I had known, I would have brought three guest spots. And I'm like, 90 minutes. And he's like, I'm thinking 30, 35 for you. He says Ooh. to Greg. Which I'm like, you don't want your opener doing 35 no, minutes. No, no, they're I mean, tired after the whole shit show. Yeah, I mean, it's just a long time for one guy. The, if 35 minutes with three or four people is great because it's guest spot, it's a new person. Yes, yes. But when you watch the same person for 35 minutes, you get to know them. You're into that yes, rhythm, that, that feeling. Yes. So he does 35, and he looks at me, he's like, 60, 60 plus. Oh. My hour special is not an hour. I don't want to do an hour. No. I'm like, I have 45, 50 minutes. I haven't done it in an hour since my special, which was 55 minutes. Yes, and that was a hot, packed comedy club. This is a spread out, sprawling anal. And that was at the end of like 20 straight weeks on the road, training like a fighter, building up to the special. Yes. This is like, I got my feet up all day. I'm over here jerking off with my shoe in my ass. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm watching basketball and sure. fucking around. I haven't done, even when I went to side splitters, I did 35 because I had fat uh, Louie with me yes. and Sarah and an MC. So I was coasting with 35. He must be doing an hour, this guy. Yeah, 35 is so much closer to a headliner than it is to a feature. Right. You're in that, but you're already in that window now. So uh, it was a little ugly. I mean, I had to do an hour for, and by the way, like I said, huge. I'm at Radio City Music Hall oh, with, with the, the List family. What, what do you think? It was two hundo in there, Max? No, there was 78 people. Oh. 78. There was fucking... 925 empty seats, and I'm doing 60 minutes. Not oh, the TV man. show. More boring. Oh, tick, 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 tick. That's how I felt, and it was one of those ones where you're like, yeah, so that's how that bit goes. Let me see. Oh, uh, our school bus is funny. I'm doing that thing, <laughs> and I'm looking at the clock. I'm like, you got to be shitting me. I mean, it was brutal, but... Are you getting titters? Or s I had some tits, a All few right. tits, a couple pussies, good. a couple cocks. I mean... There was some big laughs, but you know what I did was I, I did too many lines where I'm like, boy, this is my career's shit. I got uh, nothing. Because yeah, they yeah. start to believe you. Yes, they start to go, yes. yeah, well, that one, they start heckling and shit. It's not a joke anymore. First, like, hey, my agent sucks. Yeah, this is crazy. And then after the 13th one, they're like, yeah, you, your agent sucks and you suck. Yeah, it got a little rough, but there was a few Tuesdays there. I got to thank you guys. And ultimately, it was fun. And uh, afterwards, Greg and I were like, that was crazy. Was that all right? Should we kill ourselves? Are yeah. you fine? Should we kiss? So we did. Sure. Um, well, but Stone's a good egg and a, and, a, and a hell of an opener. Oh, yeah. He's hilarious. I'm mean, one of the funniest guys ever. And yeah. we're driving back. We stopped at McDonald's. It felt like the old days. Yeah. We're like in McDonald's. We're sitting there. We're the only two there. And we're, we're talking about comedy. I'm going to do this. I need to do that. This is where I need to improve. That bit's funny. This is a good premise. Felt like the classic old days. He's putting his fries in his burger, which is always weird to me. Mm. Great time. Good gig. Well, I'm happy to be back. You know, we're doing a gig tonight. City Winery. The seller's back. When do we send to Vales? When do we send to Vales? Fridays. Yesterday? Oh, geez. Yeah. Oh, well. I didn't do it again. I forgot. Boy, they got to send out a reminder now. I know. I thought we sent them out on Sunday. It's all loosey-goosey, but hey, you we, missed that anyway. We used to send them out on Sunday. Did we? Yeah. Yeah. Sunday avails. Yeah, that's it's been so long. I'll text Liz, it's weird. But let me ask you though, by the way, those kind of gigs, how was the um producer? Was she pissed? No, he he was happy. I, th I think he was happy. I couldn't tell, but 
He's an old friend. I knew he used to work at City Steam years ago. Good guy, good egg. He's going to start doing these, so you should do it at some point. Hopefully, it'll all open back up. All right. It's a beautiful theater. It's like a real theater theater. Huge. Uh-huh. a big production thing. Money okay? Money was great. All right. Yeah, it was yeah, probably more than I deserve. But, oh, uh, boy. Great great time. Highly recommend. And uh, all kinds of dates coming up. I'm coming yes. to Omaha Funny Bone April 23rd and 24th. Not a cheap flight anymore. No, those flights really kicked up a notch. And uh, May 15th, Paramount Theater in Austin. Ooh-wee. Keep an eye out for that. And an ear out for some podcasting. Uh-huh. And, um, ooh, that was direct nipple hit. All right. I still got it. And uh, what else do we got going on? Something else. Kansas City and Des Moines in May Funny or bone. June, I think. Kansas City and Des Moines. Skankfest. Is, is that, that happening? I don't know if that's announced. I don't know either. Skankfest is a thing that happens sometimes. Sure. Fun thing, big thing. But that'll be something. And uh, I don't know what else. Check out Joe and Ron on Talk Movies. There we had Louie on. It was exciting. And check out Mindful Metal Jacket. I had a bunch of doctors and scientists on. I've been taking some swings on some real guests. Oh, good. I'm tired of talking to comics. Comics are stupid. They're idiots. And also, these guys... Doctors are they're bored at home. They got nothing to do, and they want they they find it flattering. And they got like four thousand followers. They're like, oh my god, they get back to you right away. The yeah. comments are like, how many people listen? How many subscribers right, you get? Right. So I got some real deal guests in there. Go check that out. Hit my YouTube and uh, fuck your mother. Oh, and Sarah's YouTube special. What? She, she recorded her album at New York Comedy Club. She filmed it. She's releasing it on YouTube. It goes live Friday, nine p.m. on YouTube. Go subscribe. Watch it. Leave a nice comment. Work that algorithm the way we do. I got a post about that. I had no. I didn't even know this is happening. Please do. This is not happening. Yes, it's a YouTube uh, <laughs> premiere Friday, nine p.m. Like what we did. Exactly. All right. What's the? You got a title? I think voluptuous boy. Same as the ah, album. Ah, cool. Yeah. All right. So Good get title. on there. Get on it. Uh, I'm also at the Paramount this weekend, and uh, yeah, a lot of stuff cooking. Uh, Salt Lake City. Miami Improv, uh, uh, Houston, I think, and other stuff, Connecticut, uh, Hartford, uh, Rhode Island down the line, Boston down the line, all kinds of fun stuff, Spokane, Tacoma, so check the website, check the tweets, check the Insta, hit, uh, check out me and Sam's pod, and uh, yeah, how's that water, is it, is it horrible? It- it smells like uh, oregano or something, ah, like a pizza sauce. Twice with the oregano. It's strange. Damn it. I don't know what it is, was... but... Oh, go ahead. Oh, well. No, that's it. So, yeah, check was... all that out. Check out our specials. Uh, check out Sarah's and uh, praise Allah. And Patreon. Blow your aunt. Patreon also. Yeah, it's big. All right. George is saying cut it. Cut it. <laughs>